This episode of Rivals is presented by Zambrero. Feel good mix. Welcome back to Rivals Season 3. This time we pit eight of the country's best underground talents against each other in a no-holes-barred, power-hacking, tech-punting, tube-stuffing marathon. It's do-or-die time for many of these athletes as they compete for sponsorship and a place on surfing's world tour. The stakes are high and you can expect some of the most technical and entertaining surfing we've seen in the series yet. We've pushed heat times out to three hours to give our chargers maximum time to flex. They get two months to pick a window to surf. It's local only brah, with surfers forced to pick a spot within 60 kilometers of their front door. They choose their best three waves from the session to be adjudicated by a professional panel of judges No step-offs, just pure paddle power. Seems straightforward enough, but you'd be surprised. Let's dive in and find out what this year's Rivals contenders are all about. First up, the Sunny Coast cult hero, Wade Carmichael, AKA the Gosford Grug, AKA the Evoker Jesus, AKA the ax-swinging, meat-hacking, beer-bellied lumberjack. At 29, with three years on the world tour under his belt, he's the veteran of the pack with a signature meat hack. Tipping the scales at 86 kilograms of prime beer battered beefcake, you can expect Wado to be teeing off on sections like Long John Daly at the driving range. Four! Uh, pretty much signed up so I can go surf my home break again. Oh my God, it's freaking cooking. Again, three waves in a row. It's going to be that good to be able to surf your hometown and have all your mates in, from your hometown that you grew up with and wax the other crew. It's going to be that fun. I remember as a kid competing against him and I was just like, dude, if this was a boxing match, I'd just want to headbutt you right now. Like, he's so gnarly. <laughs> like, that would be interesting. I'll probably end up just falling in love with his clips and not want to compete against him. I'll be like, all right, you've got it. Settle down. <laughs> Everywhere we travel, he's just the king of the barbecue. and holds it down and just eats steaks, drinks beers and goes and does big power hack. He's just a big, solid, hairy man. Just looks like a big tradie, just like that raw power and strength. Like he's just been shoveling or bricking all day, you know, just carrying, lugging heavy stuff. He reminds me of like a lumberjack or something. Just an absolute Viking. <laughs> when I think of Wado, I just think of like the guy with a big beard, like the lumberjack guy that just chops down trees. The most friendly, quiet assassin that would probably like decimate three dudes on a footy field with how thick and strong he is. <laughs> just with a ball, just run through them all because he's just a brick shit house like smasher. It's all in my court now, so I, I'm the one that gets to make the calls and then I have to perform. So it's like, there's no excuses. You make the call, you've got to go out there and do the best surfing you can do. And it's just, just a different take on competing, I guess. It's going, to, it's going to be fresh, it's going to be fun, and I'll make the calls. With Wado at the helm, the lunatics are running the asylum. Our next mad man is the prince of behind the rock pits, the heir apparent to the coolie kid's throne, Sheldon Simkis. A competitor on this year's Challenger Series, Sheldon took time out from his World Tour qualification campaign to compete in Rivals this year. A preternatural tube pig with the full kit bag of technical trickery. He's got a nose for picking the eyes out of it and one of the best waves in the world in his skyrocket. Yeah, the banging snap is good. I mean, you always wish for more sand, like on a point break, you always want a bit more, so. If need be, we can contact the boys at the sandpipe and kind of, yeah, get them to pump a bit more. Get the bank pristine. Kept a close eye on this little low pressure to turn into a cyclone. 
The bank's good. The sand boys are pumping a good, good amount of sand. That cheeky little bugger is going to be sitting behind the rock, stealing everyone's waves. Oh, snapper, you can have the best surf or the worst surf of your life, really. <laughs> every type of surfer or person you could ever imagine from every spot on the planet. Three hours of snap with no one out, it's unheard of. He is always on the money. Like even days that we've been on separate skis or whatever, like, and we haven't really spoken or we have, and, and we'll still both rock up in the same spot. And it's just like, like, what's up? <laughs> we, you know, like he's, he's onto it. The way he's won the, the event before, so. They could do it again. I personally don't want it to happen again, so I'm going to try to scratch that one off the list and get the Sunny Coast for the win. Next up, it's the Byron Bay himself, Solly Bailey. A former World Tour competitor and Vulcan Pipeline Pro winner, this proud Bunjilung man has battled the best at surfing's elite level and comes into the series as the field's preeminent all-rounder. A competitive firebrand with plenty of grit. Solly is surely a special to take out this year's rival's crown. I wouldn't not want to be a part of it. Give these a run for their money. <laughs> Solly's dog eat dog, I remember. We've been in the under 12s, 14s, 16s. He was just like tongue out, scrapping, just far out, head red, sweating. He's just like, he'll do anything to win. Solly's an animal. He's, you can see, no, no talking to each other. He's, He's all fired up and he's, he's a little mongrel. He's just like making noises like, like growling at you and shit. I think every one of us probably always wanted to have little, like a competitive free surf time. Like imagine a heat for three hours, like freaking, you know, in waves that you choose. Like that's what you want every time, right? Solly's one that always keeps an eye on the swells and waves and is always there when it's good. So he won't be missing anything and I think he's a really good forecaster too so he's got a great chance. <laughs> he'll have some good spots in mind. I think the only thing that will let him down is he might overthink the forecasting. That's uh, a in a nutshell. Don't come surfing here. Oh, I've gone to Byron a few times. I think I did the lighthouse walk and went to the markets and it was a bit of a zoo so maybe next time I'll take my nail or my 20 down there and cut my boardies real short and get into it. You got the hippies you got to deal with, so <laughs> we'll see how he goes, see if he can uh, get away from them. It's pretty much a handful of the kids that I have had rivalry with for the last, I don't know what, 10, 13 years or something. Show them who's boss still, it'll be good fun. <laughs> Fighting words from the North Coast Rail Shaman. After the break, we meet the rest of the rival's crew. Let's face it, nobody wants to get skunked. Don't go before you know. Know before you go. With Surfline, get live surf cams, long range forecasts, and so much more. Surfline, we'll help you find your next wave. Welcome back to Rivals. Next up, we have the pride of Port Macquarie, the prodigy himself, Matt Banty. This force of nature won everything before him during a stellar junior career before spending two years on surfing's world tour. His run was cut short by a string of serious injuries, but he's on the comeback trail now and looking every bit the winner of Rivals season three. Let's see if the prodigious Port Mac punt freak can turn back the clock and add the rival's trophy to his bulging cabinet. Most me your work I've done in two years, and it's about two years worth of work. Yeah, when he's on, he's best surfer in Australia, hands down. He can make the hardest things look so easy. Banting over the last 15 years or whatever, our whole entire career, He's competitively been the gnarliest one out of us all. I'm pretty sure I can count the amount of events I've won on one hand. Like, that guy's probably got, like, needs five hands for the amount of events he's won. I'd say he's got the best technique of anyone in this crew and even in Australia. Like, he just places it in the perfect spot every time. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to beat when it comes to competition. <laughs> He's ruthless. You see him in the lineup, he's moving around, catches a lot of waves, and he just gets it done and he's like, how the hell did you get a six? 
and I'm out here waiting for a wave and I didn't even know where he took off on. He just pops up and he just gets a six and you're like, where'd that come from? And then it's like eight point ride. You're like, I didn't even see him in the lineup. I'm like, where, what's going on here? He just grinds at these scores and he knows exactly what he needs to do. Matty Banning is the best comp surfer I've seen since I've been doing comps. Full stop. Up next, it's Jacob Chippo Wilcox, the Margaret River Chew Pig Slab Fiend Conehead Madman. One of the greatest tube riders on planet Earth, Chippo packs a punch in a contest singlet too, narrowly missing out on World Tour qualification in recent years. Now, with two months to pick a window at one of his much loved slabs, he's sure to be a fan favourite. My understanding from being called rivals, like you put up against your rivals, you surf at your home break and whoever can make the best call to get the best waves at the home break and then execute by surfing them well, be the winner, right? Blow in central this car park already. I reckon he's gonna be chilling, I reckon he's, gonna, he's just rubbing his hands together just going, yeah baby, this is, this is what I want. He's got quite an abundance of reef breaks he could surf, so. If one's not good, it's probably a short drive to another one that's probably just as pumping. He can mix it up in barrels, airs, turns. It's going to be really hard to beat. The most exciting one out of all of them that, I, that I'm keen to see, because like, if he scores, it could be so sick, his section. I know when the waves are on there, it, they're on. His local knowledge in that area is going to find him a decent wave where he's going, to, he's going to be one of the top contenders for the winner. I know one thing, he probably won't be at Margaret River trying to get any on the main breaks. I reckon I'll be trying to find a good day to line up, get some barrels, get some turns and yeah, but the main focus is get barrel. Our next competitor is the youngest in the field, Sunshine Coast aerial shaman Reef Hazelwood. An absolute wizard in marginal conditions, Reef doesn't need much to get going. Give him a left rip bowl, some sus air wind, and watch him go. Zazazazoo! With two podium finishes in the Red Bull Airborne series, he's among the top aerialists in the world, and definitely the best in this field. Looking at all these guys, there's not one person that I want to beat. Like, I just want to beat them all. I don't want to just sit back and watch them win. So, yeah, I want to take their scouts and, uh, yeah, put them in their place. Sick. Getting ready. Don't need to see anything else. He's going to be going into his heat at home on the sunny coast. And I think he's just going to go on the moon, just helicopter boy style, just going mad. I'd say he's probably the best in this group of people at doing huge airs and just landing with ease. Man, I think he's going to chase a, probably a beach break and probably just huck the biggest airs I've ever seen. And he's more than capable of pulling them off, so it could be kind of deadly for everyone else. He's good enough in the air to put three crazy ones on the board and pick all three of them, because they're all different and they're all just as gnarly as each other. <laughs> I'm not going to write the Sunny Coast off too hard, but it might be hard to pick a window in the, in the two months. Lucky Reef's a pretty good grubber because he's probably going to be grubbling for his driving seat. Maybe a little crummy, little left rip bowl and some airs. Mate, for the sunny coast it can be crap, but we can always produce. Produce what we need. We'll see what happens after the surfing's done. Hopefully my surfing can do the talking. Next up, Narrabeen frontside specialist Geordie Lawler. Fresh off an unforgettable world tour debut at Maxing Pipeline, the surfer from Sydney's north side fell agonisingly short of full-time world tour qualification last year. He's back on the Challenger Series in 2022 and hell-bent on qualification. Will winning rivals be the springboard to world tour greatness? Geordie Lawler, another goofy footer. North Narrabeen. Geordie Lawler is just North Narrabeen. Narrabeen. <laughs> that's, that's, this is going to be easy, mate. He's going left, he's going to surf Narrabeen, and he's going to get every wave in that three hours. <laughs> I know they're a tight crew, but I reckon they're all pretty keen to get their waves as well. I reckon they give a shit, unless, he's, unless they're getting a percentage. <laughs> it's surprising, like, he takes off and you just, you never know what he's going to do. He's got some sick airs on dial, a couple different grabs and stuff that he does, and uh, I love watching his surfing, so stylish and stuff, so it's going to be sick. 
I reckon if a subley's blowing down at North Narrabeen, you could see a few massive airs and then Ali Wright's here to get his back end fired up. We'll see what happens, but hopefully they don't score. Hopefully Narrabeen's pretty dismal. <laughs> Yeah, some of the names in the lineup for this, I was like, well, it's like really cool to be a part of it. The final contestant in this year's series is Kalani Ball. The rangy, long-limbed style master can wind up and let rip with the best of them. Super stylish and proficient across the board, he's another on the World Tour qualification campaign trail. Born and raised on the Cold Coast south of Sydney, he knows his way around heaving slabs, powerful point breaks, and punchy beaches. What will the Stanwellian serve up for rivals? <laughs> Leave it up to the other boys now. <laughs> He's good in the Rashi for sure. I, I, I don't know how he'll go in the rival series, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. Stanwell Park, mate. That's, that's his hometown, isn't it? Stanwell, Stanwell? Stan, what, is that his hometown? Yeah, some of the boys have got some pretty good home breaks, so it's like, uh, yeah, it's a tricky one. You just gotta try and pick that day and you also gotta blame yourself if it's not too good. <laughs> Looking like Chango out there, boys. <laughs> I feel like he's watched quite a few different surfers with different techniques and different styles and um, he's got these turns that are like really Dane Reynolds-like and then he's got kind of back-end surfing that's like Taj Burrow and um, sick to see like a surfer that has different styles that you can kind of recognize and just absolutely love. Is he go for it top surfer? Like I can imagine going big hucks, big finners off the first section or he could be just placing the rail and doing some proper old traditional surfing. you kind of like, wow, like he pulled that off and holy shit, he made, made that or where'd that come from? He like constantly just blows, blows people's minds with how he's doing turns and you won't expect it. You won't really expect it, and then you'll just do like full rotation air reverse, and you're like, well, like, so yeah, you can expect that. That's the cast for season three. After the break, we learn what our charges are up against in their bid to return Australian surfing to its former glory. These young charges have been tasked with returning Australian surfing to its former glory. It's no mean feat given the dominance of the Medina-led Brazilian storm, but drawing on decades of Australian sporting greatness and plenty of battler grit, they have begun making inroads, pushing the likes of Callum Robson, Conor O'Leary and Jackson Baker into the top half of the world tour. <laughs> we got to come together as a group and really support each other and to push too like it's it's not just like oh like how you going mate it's like get get out there and rip in mate like you, you can do this uh and to see him actually do it it's even better everyone getting together as a group and thriving off each other's success and pushing each other to be better there's only positive things that are going to come out of that and it's awesome to be a part of yeah, watching all the Brazilians band together and we're like, we want to do this too. And when we look back at Australia surfing history, when all the guys were winning world titles, they were traveling together. And it's really cool to see us young guys start to do it again. You know, I feel like now that we uh, can come together with a new energy, we can kind of start taking wins and, and coming together as a bit of an Aussie storm. Guaranteed, that's why there's, in last year, there was a bunch of Aussies that made it. For sure. Having the whole crew on the Challenger Series staying together was the best we've done in a long time for people qualifying out of Australia. And when we're overseas and we're in a different place and no one's quite at home or quite comfortable, when you've got your good mates there and you support each other, you're there for one another and you can just help out when you can, it's, it's like a bit more of a homely feeling. And the Aussies, we need that. Like that's that's in our blood. We're we're true blue Aussies, and we like helping out our mates. I reckon we had a few years of like just not many Aussies qualifying, and I reckon it was just time for us to step up. So we kind of just like are stepping up a bit. But I reckon as well, like the community that they're getting together on the tour is probably pretty important and can be the difference for sure. Like it even makes me feel good now, like thinking back to how good it was to see everyone come together and like a new kind of crew banding together and, and backing each other.
Yeah, it's so cool. I love Australia. I love everyone here. It's the best country in the world. We got to we got to represent it as much as, much as we can, and uh, it's just good, good core country where everyone kind of has that that kind of mongrel in them. So it's, it's just we, I back it 100. percent I think I think all these boys have got what it takes, and maybe I'm a little bit biased to say that because I want to see all these Aussies get on tour and put it up against all the Brazilians that are always so competitive. So I think all these boys uh, can do it and with the right, right mindset, anything's possible. The current talent pool we've got with all them boys we just talked about is incredible. I think we're all in the prime or close to the primes of our careers. So it's time to make it all happen and see what we can do with it all. It's going to be an interesting couple of years. The Aussie Storm, the Battler Brigade, the great Australian stitcher, call it what you will, these boxing kangaroos might have banded together in their quest for world tour qualification, but they'll be putting all that aside as they go head to head for the rival's crown. Claiming the rival's crown is no easy feat. You've both seasoned so far, won by former world champions in the form of Joel Parkinson and Sofia Milanovic. It's a format that lends itself to the best of the best. Yeah, you know, like to, to go down to a QS or whatever and, and kind of beat someone, it's, it's, you know, you kind of take that in your cap and you never really brag about it. But to beat the other seven boys on this rivals list, it, um, I'd be bragging for sure. It'd be a good one. It's never ending, hey, like competing with, with these boys. To get the jump on them would be insane. It'd be almost something I wouldn't really believe. It'd be good to beat Banting, put one on the board against him after all these years. Funny fact, I've actually been using Solly's bins. But today, cannot do that. You're not even sure where your mental state's going to be at and like whether you can pull the trigger at the right time to have it that day. I'm sure someone's going to get skunked, so it'll be pretty funny. <laughs> I'd look at this like it's not a 30 minute heat, it's a, it's a three hour window and you know, your three best waves, so it's a, little, it's a little different to a normal heat, so things could change. Three hours, three waves, I'll take it. Being control your surroundings, it's, it's going to be a different one to be able to have a heat like that because there's, there's so many so many changing elements in the ocean that you can't control. So if we can have the couple one percenters where we're in control, it's going to make it a bit easier. I grew up kind of just having a southerly wind and just going big and doing punts. It's going to be sick to see everyone's style like kind of amplified because it's it's where it's uh, been shaped, and so it's going to be exciting and um, really awesome and such a unique thing to be able to have that. Looks like we got out, mateys. <laughs> Uh, I think the variety of the waves that everybody's going to have, like seven of the eight guys are all along the east coast. Throughout that there's going to be different types of beaches, different types of reefs, there's going to be break walls, all this sort of stuff and I think it's going to create some cool surfing and I think everyone's will be a little bit different which is exciting. I'm going to say Sheldon and Solly are going to be the, the two top dogs in, in the event and uh, I know how competitive Solly is so I'd love to get him. And I know how competitive Shelly is and he's been ripping at the moment too, so I have a good feeling he's going to be out snapping behind the rock and stealing everybody's waves and doing that, that thing out there. So uh, if he does that and I can do my thing in the Voker and beat him, it would be pretty sick. For any of the boys in this format, like three hours at your home break on any given condition, I think we can all produce some magic, so it'll just be who produces the magic in the three hours. A cast chock-a-block full of hungry, cutting-edge talent has rivals set to explode for season three. We're expecting the best surfing yet. Next week we head west for a mortal cone off with the great tube pig, Jacob Wilcox. This episode of Rivals is presented by Zambrero. Feel good mix.